This morning we're going to talk about a second spiritual discipline. The spiritual discipline of stewardship. How we handle our time, our talents, and our treasures. The time, talents, and treasures that God has given to us. Francis of Assisi said, it is in giving that we receive, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. So this morning, we'll look at time, talents, and treasures. And we'll look at Matthew 25, verses 14 through 19, as we read through the, the parable that Jesus told about the talents. For it will be like a man going on a journey called, who called his servants and entrusted them with his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who received five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who received the one talent went and dug a hole in the ground and hid, the ta hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled the accounts with them. The talents represent opportunities for us to use our abilities. If five talents were given to a person with minimal ability, he would be destroyed by the heavy responsibility. But if only one talent were given to a man of great ability, he would be disgraced and degraded. God assigns the work opportunity according to our ability. We are living in the time between Matthew 25, 18, when the master went away, and 25, 19, when he returns again and asks us to be accountable. We have been assigned our ministries according to the abilities and gifts that God has given us. It is our privilege to serve the Lord and to multiply his goods. Here in this parable, we see three things. Three things about the time, the talents, and the treasures that God has given to us. First of all, we see that it is His. It is His to give. It is His property. It is His gift. It is His to give and he gives freely and generously according to our abilities. He gives us three things. The first of those things is our time. In Psalm 139.16, it says, Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. In Matthew 6, 27, Jesus says, 
And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? God is the one who has formed us. He knows all about us, including the number of our days. They are written in his book. He is the one who controls the amount of time that we have here on earth. We cannot add a single hour, a single minute, or even a single second to what he has given us. And with the time he has given us, he calls on us to serve him. The psalmist puts it this way, teach us to number our days. Teach us to use the days that we have to the greatest value, to the greatest advantage, to be busy in serving the Creator who has given us those days. We are called a minister. We who are here as pastors are here to equip. You are the ministers. And you are here to minister. Paul says that in Ephesians chapter 4. As we equip you to minister, to build up the body of Christ. The second thing God gives us is our talent. In Isaiah 44, Verse 24, we read, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. The Creator God, the one who has formed the heavens and the earth, is the one who has formed each one of us formed us in a special way for a special ministry. The Lord has shaped us through our experiences and our education, shaped us from our mother's womb to be who we are today. Each of us is special. SHAPE is an acronym. It's an acronym we, learn, we use to describe how God has formed us. The S stands for spiritual gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul tells us that the Holy Spirit gives each one of us who are Christians one or more spiritual gifts. Those gifts are not for us to use for ourselves. Those gifts are for us to use to edify and build up the church, the body of Christ. The H stands for heart. Where are your passions? Where are the things you get excited about? For me, it's building up others, preparing them for ministry, bringing them in and getting them started. Going, maybe going beyond what I ever could think or believe they could do. But where are your passions? Is it with children? Is it with youth? God gives us our passions. Where do we want to minister? Is it ushering? Is it running the sound system? He directs our hearts. The A stands for abilities. Unlike the gifts, the spiritual gifts that God gives us, abilities are those special talents that we have, 
that God formed within us. We have a, a couple granddaughters. One loves animals. And she has learned to ride horses. Ride horses in jumping, ride horses in competition. And she does very well. That's her passion and that's her uh, ability. The other one, music and gymnastics. And at the age of 14, I look at my wife to see if she nods her head. At the age of 14, she wins blue ribbons. But she's also been asked to take her ability and teach the younger children. God gives us our abilities for a reason. To use for him. It's up to us to choose for God's glory or for our own glory. S-H-A-P, personality. Personality, God forms each one of us with a different personality. Are we outgoing? We like to be around lots of people. We get excited by, by mixing with people or are we introverted? We just like to sit quietly in the corner. Maybe read a book. Are we intuitive? That's Gretchen. I come up with a question, she has the answer before it's out of my mouth. She knows what I'm gonna ask. Or are we rational? That's me. I have to sit and think about it. And think. And think. And think. Are we leaders? Or are we followers? God has made us with that personality. And he can use us all. And the last... E stands for experiences. What life experience have you had? What has brought you to where you are at? Before we came to Africa, while I was still working, I was diagnosed with cancer. I've been through chemotherapy two or three times. And the doctor, who is a good Christian brother, keeps patching me up and sending me back to Africa. But that experience with cancer has allowed me to deal with others, others who have had cancer, or who have had loved ones who have had cancer. What experiences have we had that can help us deal with, comfort, care for someone else? Is it our training? Are we trained as an accountant, an engineer, medicine? How can God use your life, your life experiences to help others? God shapes us for the ministry. That ministry may be as a teacher or a doctor, as a carpenter. Whatever that ministry is that God has called us to, God has called us, he's shaped us and called us there. Maybe more than one ministry. But when God calls you, whether it's as a teacher, whether it's as a doctor, whether it's as a laborer, whether it's as a salesperson, whatever God has called you to, 
He has called you there and ordained you for that ministry. And whatever you are, you are an ordained whatever. Whatever He's called you to. He may change your ministry. For 45 years, I was an ordained engineer. Now I'm an ordained pastor. I keep asking God, what in the world is he doing? God also calls us to be a father or a mother, a grandparent. We got a phone call, or we made a phone call yesterday. We called our son. We hadn't talked to him in a couple weeks, and he was getting anxious. He and his wife got on the phone and announced, we're about to be a grandparent for the seventh time. Being grandparents is a calling of God. Being parents is a calling of God. Being a friend, a husband, a wife. God has put us in the different relationships that we are in today. All of those take time and they take effort to be successful. He also calls us to serve him in the church. The church is God's way to reach the world with the saving message of Jesus Christ. It's the way to grow in grace and in the knowledge of him. As part of our stewardship, of our time and talents, he has given us what we need to believe in Him. The third thing, the third thing that God calls us or gives us is our treasures. In Psalm 24, 1, it says, And the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and the world and those that dwell therein. All belongs to the Lord. In 2 Corinthians 9, 7, each one must give as he decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. The earth is the Lord's, all is his, but he shares those things with us, and we return a portion to him. Not just our money, but our time and our talents as well. God is a loving Father who provides for our needs. He provides in many ways by providing his treasures. God put Adam in the Garden of Eden. He created him, put him in the garden, and he said... Go to work, tend the garden. That set an example for us. As we work, we provide. We provide for ourselves. We provide for our families. We provide for those around us. And we provide for his church. There are many verses in the Bible that talk about money. Money can either be a good thing or a bad thing. It depends on how you use it. Do you control it? Or does it control you? The world's view of money is to get all you can and spend it on those things which will you really want. Get all you can. 
Make as much money as you can. Look as rich as you can. I'll tell you, I don't know about everywhere else, but I know in the United States, probably 80% of the people are in debt. And they'll never get out of it because they spend more than they earn. Trying to keep up with their neighbor who looks at them and is trying to keep up with them. God's view of money is stewardship. Taking care of it. Using it for His work and His blessing. Using it for His ministry. We must be careful that we don't just give when we give to get something in return. Jesus calls for us to lay up our treasures in heaven to further his kingdom and we will gain our return in heaven. The first thing is It's his to give. Time, talent, treasures. The second thing is that he entrusts those to his servants. He gives us to use until he returns. The master was going away on a long journey. And he gave to his servants his possessions to use until he returned. They didn't know when he would return. The same with Jesus. Jesus is gone. He's returned to heaven. But one day he'll come again. And he gives us our time, our talents, and our treasures to use until He returns. His timing is indefinite. Until He comes again, whether it's five years or a lifetime, we need to be busy serving Him. We need to be using time, talent, and treasures to serve Him. He gives us as much as we can handle. God doesn't give us more than we can handle, and he doesn't give us less. He gives us our opportunities according to our abilities and to our faithfulness. As we are faithful in handling what he's given us, he gives us more. Some can handle more, and they're offered more. Some handle less. God doesn't overload them, nor nor does he give them too little. He gives them just what they can handle, just what they can do. It's more likely that when we feel overloaded, We're looking at how busy we think we are and not realizing that God is calling us to serve Him. Busy with our things and not with His. He gives them to us to use. He gives our time, talent, and treasures to serve Him. He prepares us for His service. He shapes us. He molds us. How we use our God-given abilities is up to us. But one day, God will call for an accounting. One day, He'll return. And He'll ask us, how did you use what I gave you? 
He doesn't ask us to serve him without providing the time, the talent, and the treasures. God never asks us to do something without providing the means, without providing the ability and the time. Even the smallest effort or the greatest, if he calls, he enables. When I was about 15 years old, we had a a Sunday school program. Every Sunday we'd open the Sunday school with a little Sunday school program. And my teacher asked me one time to do an object lesson. I was shaking so badly, you probably couldn't hear me in the front row let alone the back row. But I realized then that it's God who enables. And I promised him whatever he asked me to do, if he'd provide, I'd do. If he'd provide, I'd do. Now I'm standing up here in front of you guys. I'm nervous. I think you're nervous too. But God provides. He asks us to serve him where we are. Charles Haddon Spurgeon had a, uh, had a college. And one time he was interviewing a young man who wanted to get into that college and become a pastor. And he talked to the young man, and the young man had had several jobs, and he'd failed at all of them because he didn't apply himself. He wasn't faithful in his work. Spurgeon rejected him for the college. How, if he could not apply himself as a clerk in a store where God had called him, how did he think he could apply himself as a pastor? God asks us to serve him where we are. We need to be careful. This is something I've been concerned about for some time. We need to be careful to join God in His ministry and not to be asking God to join us in what we think we want to do. Many people get excited about something and they say, God, join me. And it's not really where God wants them. It's God's to give. Time, talent, treasure. And he entrusts it to us, his servants. He gives it to us to use until he comes. And when he comes, he will call for an accounting. He will call for an accounting based on two things. How we use what he has provided. In 1 Corinthians 4, verse 2, it says, Moreover, it's required of stewards, moreover, it's required of stewards that they be found faithful. We must be faithful in carrying out God's plan for our lives. When he returns, will he find us continuing to do what he's given us to do? There's another parable, the parable of the unfaithful steward. And when the master left, he assigned him to take care of his property, take care of his fellow stewards. And when the master returned, he found him 
eating and drinking and making merry and ignoring what the master had given him. Are we faithful? Are we faithful to the end? The second is the result of our efforts. He will judge based on the result of our efforts. Jesus never asks us to do more than we can. Our result is based on our abilities. The steward that was given five talents gained five more. The steward that was given two gained only two more. Yet both were faithful and both were praised for being good and faithful stewards because they used what they had because they were faithful in doing what they should have done. They both doubled what the master had given them. But one failed to even try. He took what the Lord had given him, dug a hole in the ground, buried it, And when the master came and asked for an accounting, he dug it back up and said, here it is back. He wasn't faithful. He didn't use what he had. If the Lord has given you a talent in playing an instrument and you don't play it, you lose that talent. You have to play just about every day, don't you, Rachel? Close. I grew up with a a young lady. She was a little older than I was. She was my Sunday school teacher's daughter. And I mentioned her last week. She wrote me a letter that kept me from dropping out when I went off to college. We used to, uh, we used to sing. And we used to use things called hymn books. No projector. A book. And we would do a, a, a sing where I would ask people, what's your favorite hymn? 325, Marilyn was playing it. 682, Marilyn was playing it. She didn't even have to look it up. She spent hours every day practicing the piano, playing those hymns. The results of our efforts. Have we put effort into using and developing what God has given to us? Like Caleb said, IEC is your local international church. And without your time, talents, and treasures, It can't exist. We're local in that we exist right here in Addis. We exist now at two campuses. One here at Sarbate and one out by CMC, we call IEC East. We're trying to expand and to reach out into the community. But it takes time, it takes talent, and it takes treasures. Not just mine, but it takes them from you, each and every one of us. 
If you live out near CMC, you love to come to church here because of the experience. Take your time, talent, and treasures and make IEC East an experience that you love, that is wonderful for you. Stewardship's not just about what we have in our pocket, but it's about using our gifts. We have the two campuses. We have opportunities to serve at both with children, with youth, with the music team, with teaching, with just being there and supporting one another. God calls us to serve using our time, our talents, and our treasures. What are the time, talents, and treasures that God has given to you? Where is God calling you to use them? Dr. John A. King said we have three things to give. Remember, Francis of Assisi said, it is in giving that we receive. Dr. King says we have three things to give, our time, our talent, and our treasure. What are you doing with what you've been given?